Hi and welcome to my next video. Today we're talking about the reactions of alkenes. These are a really important class of reactions and they are known as addition reactions. So to start with I want to give you a definition. Addition reactions are reactions where the double bond is broken down to a single bond and a new atom or group of atoms is added to each of the two carbons that was involved in the double bond. So overall there are two atoms or groups of atoms that are added into the molecule. Now this is a reaction that is reaction type that is particular to things with double and triple bonds because you have to have a double bond to start. It's called an addition reaction because you're actually adding something onto it. The reason these reactions occur is that the double bond has two pairs of shared electrons in that double bond space. And so that shared pair of electrons means that other things are anything with a slight positive charge, for example, is going to be very much attracted to that makes it a very much a reactive site on the molecule. So, there are several common types of reactions. The simplest one to think about is the addition of hydrogen. Okay, and we can add all sorts of things to our molecule. Hydrogen is the most common one to add. Well, no, it's not the most common one. It's the simplest one to think about because you end up turning your alkene back into an alkane needs to happen in the presence of a platinum catalyst and usually needs high-ish temperatures and pressures. And we add one hydrogen atom to each of the carbons which turns our alkene back into an alkane. So let me show you what that might look like. Okay, so let's just consider the simplest possible alkene for a second. Here we have ethene. This could be any alkene um, from two carbons to 200 carbons. The same reaction type will happen. But what we're thinking about right now We've got this alkene. A couple of things to note. First one is that I've got the H2 and the platinum catalyst over top of the arrow. And I've done that for a very personal for a very particular reason. When you put them over top of the arrow, they're not technically part of the equation, so you don't have to balance the equation so much. Okay, so that is quite a useful thing to note. So when we add that in, all we're going to do Let's break that double bond down to a single bond. You can think of, I always start off by actually drawing the guts of that molecule out, just with only a single bond in there. So if you can imagine, that is the same molecule, just with a single bond instead of a double bond. Now, of course, you've got three bonds around each carbon, not four. So that is a slight problem. So what we're going to do to put the fourth bond on, this is where the two H's come into it. So here we have, we've turned our ethene, two carbons, double bond, into ethane, single bond. Okay, and that is the guts of any addition reaction. All we're doing is adding different things onto it. So let's go back and have a look at the next. Now in a very similar way to the way that we've added hydrogen into our molecule, we could equally easily add a halogen. So halogens, just to remind you, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And you'll notice that just like hydrogen, there's two of each of them. So that makes it really easy. It's a fast reaction, and we add one of the halogens to each carbon. Very simple. Which produces our product, which is a dihaloalkane. Okay. If our halogen is bromine, if that's what we've added, then there is also an observation that we can make with this reaction as well, and that is that the bromine, the orange bromine colour, is going to disappear because all the bromine will react with our alkene, leaving just our halo alkane behind. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So again, back to our simple example of ethene. If we were going to add bromine into this, and it could be any halogen, remember they're going to work in exactly the same way, we're going to get a very similar kind of product. So again, 
and always I start off by drawing the basic structure of that molecule. It's the same thing, two carbons with two hydrogens on each. Now I'm going to add my bromine into it, and I'm going to put one bromine onto each carbon. Okay, so what I've done is I have changed the name, changed the molecule from being ethene to being 1,2-dibromoethane. Okay, so it's gone from being an alkene to a di, in this case bromo, alkane. Now the other important thing to note is that the addition of bromine and that decoloration is a test that is often used to identify the presence of an alkene. So if you have an alkene present, you can add bromine and it will decolor very quickly. You just need to give it a bit of a shake and away you go. So that is a really important reaction and a very important observation to remember. Doesn't work with the other halogens because they're all different colors. Okay, fluorine's colorless, chlorine's pale green, and iodine is purple, but bromine is orange and this works with bromine. Okay, so if we have something that has a hydrogen and a halogen, sometimes called HX, then we've still got two things we're going to add on. We're just going to add the hydrogen onto one carbon, and we're going to add the halogen onto the other carbon, making a haloalkane. Now this reaction, we can have either one or two products, depending on the alkene. And I'm going to do another video about that later. So if you want to find out, or rather when you need to find out more about that, please look at the video on my Kovnikov's rule. But right now, let's just have a look at the addition of H. So in this case, we're going to add HCl to our alkene. And we're going to do this exactly the same way we've done the previous ones. So we're going to start off with our basic molecule. Two carbons. And right now we have two hydrogens on each. All I have done is taken away the double bond. Okay, that's all I've done. Then we are going, we've got HCl. So we're going to put H onto one molecule, one carbon I should say, and we're going to put Cl onto the other carbon. And it doesn't matter whether we've got HCl, HBr, HF, or anything else that you can consider to be HX. This makes for a halo alkane. So we have, again, ethene as our reactant. And our product this time is chloroethane. I don't need to number this because there's only two carbons and there's only one chlorine. So whichever carbon I put the chlorine onto is going to be carbon number one. So I don't actually need to number it. Okay. And the final addition reaction that we're going to come across is the addition of water. And water, again, can be thought of almost like HX, where you've got H on one carbon and OH going onto the other carbon, which is going to be producing an alcohol. This one has to be done under acidic conditions. If you do it under neutral conditions, if you just mix together an alkene and water, nothing is going to happen. At least nothing that's going to be effective for you at this stage. Um, but in the presence of a dilute acid, not a concentrated acid, but a dilute acid, sometimes dilute sulfuric acid um, is the most common one that's used. So in that presence of a dilute acid, we get an alcohol. And just like with the addition of HX, we can have either one or two products, depending on how we're going. Let me just show you. Okay, so you can see with this one that over the arrow I've written H2O slash H+. And that means that that's the condition. That says the reagent, water, in the presence of hydrogen ions. And it is really important to put it in that way. Um, quite often questions will ask you to ex make sure you've included all the relevant conditions. And if you don't include those acidic, that acidification, the acidic presence, then that will not give you the grade that you're looking for. 
and in fact often will be considered an error or a mistake. So again, to figure out what your product is going to be, we're going to start off by drawing the basic template and then we're going to put H onto one carbon and OH onto the other carbon. And just like I've mentioned previously, if you weren't paying attention, it is really important that this bond here is between the carbon and the oxygen because that is where the bond is. And so we have our product, two carbons, F, single bond is an and alcohol. And because there's only two carbons, it doesn't need a number because there's only one place that alcohol group can go. Okay, so that's it for this video. In my next video, I'm going to be explaining all about Markovnikov's rule, which is what happens when we add HX or water to a complicated or a longer asymmetrical molecule. Thanks for your time.